What's up guys? Today we're going to be reviewing three new mineral sunscreens from Aven. Uh, to be honest, I think maybe just these two are new. This is the Solaire UV liquid mineral sunscreens. And then I also have their SPF 50 tinted compact for intolerant skin. And I think this is being shown as a new product on their Instagram, but I saw their Amazon page and this has had reviews for like years. So maybe it was only available in Europe. I'm not so sure, but Either way, we're gonna be reviewing these. First of all, shout out to my friend Rudy Berry for sending me these two sunscreens. She got these in PR and Aven sent her two extras and so she sent them over to me, which was super nice of her. If you don't know Rudy, I'll link her channel below. She's awesome, she's gorgeous. She has such a fun and infectious personality. I love the way she talks about makeup and skincare and style. I've only discovered her channel recently and started getting to know her, but I'm completely hooked. And the second I see her post now, I watch her videos and she's just the best. So definitely check out Rudy and thanks again for sending me these. Um, I'm really excited to talk about these. First of all, uh, Dr. Dre, not the rapper, Dr. Dre, the dermatologist here on YouTube, reviewed all three of these products on her channel. And if you've watched that video, take everything she says about the pros and cons of all of these products and flip it. And that's my opinion on every single one. Always take any review you see with a grain of salt. I think it always depends on your skin tone, skin type, texture the climate that you're in, et cetera. So let's jump into my thoughts. Just woke up, let's do this. Uh, first demo is gonna be the Aven SPF 50 plus Solaire UV mineral multi-defense sunscreen fluid. Before we get started, I've been testing five new sunscreens this week and my skin was just like, Nope, not doing it because now I've got all these breakouts and rashes on my face and it's either from the Aven sort of like makeup SPF compact, which is super thick and heavy, or it's this other sunscreen product I've been testing, the Kate Somerville chemical sunscreen spray. I have a feeling it's this. I just wanted to mention that this kind of rash is not standard for me. I also used self tanner last night, so I'm a little bit darker than, than I usually am. So I'm interested to see now if uh, this is gonna leave a white cast. So kind of a good time to test it after using self tanner. I know these are getting absolutely rave reviews, it seems across the board. Um, I have a little bit of a different perspective on these after testing them for two weeks. But what I love about these is that they're zinc oxide based, they're mineral sunscreens, which means they're not gonna cause me irritation or you know, rashes for the most part, except for maybe that, that compact. And they have niacinamide, which is an antioxidant and also helps with brightening. Elantoin, Bisabolol, I believe is how you pronounce it, which are both skin soothers. Sunscreen's the last step of your skincare, so any extra ingredients that you're getting in there aren't gonna penetrate as deeply as if you used an antioxidant serum as like your first step. So keep that in mind, you know, that's probably one of the reasons that they're a little bit more expensive, but you know, I'm in my thirties, I'm willing to pay whatevs for a good sunscreen. So it comes out super liquidy, super white, and I'll just get in here for you. Um, I think, like I said in the introduction, um, my experience with these sunscreens is pretty much the complete opposite to Dr. Dre which is so interesting because most of the time I really like her recommendations and agree with her thoughts on textures. If you don't know Dr. Dre, um, I'm gonna add a little bit more to my eyes. I always do that separately because that's the area where I'm most concerned about aging. And uh, if you don't know Dr. Dre, she's a very, very popular dermatologist on YouTube. I'm sure you all know who she is, um, but she did a whole review on all three of these products as well and absolutely freaking loved them. She gave rave reviews about these. Um, as you can see, the white one is starting to blend in very well, which I'm surprised by given the fact that I have self tanner on. Um, what's so interesting is Dr. Dre said about this one that it left a really strong white cast on her and that it was like super, super duper shiny. And I thought that was interesting because she seems like one of the palest people ever. Like she seems very, very fair. 
I feel like my skin's darker than hers and this does not leave a white cast on me. So that was kind of interesting. Dr. Dre also said that these sunscreens are incredibly moisturizing and I actually don't feel that at all. So wild. Yeah, as you can see, you know, Dr. Dre said that these were like uber shiny and moisturizing, um, especially the non-tinted white one, which I'm applying right now. But I think as you can see, as I'm working this in, there's no white cast and it's really not that shiny. In fact, after about 10 minutes of wearing uh, these sunscreens, on me, they set down to a semi-matte finish or even satin at best. So I definitely don't agree with Dr. Dre that these are very moisturizing. You know, my skin has been very dry and dehydrated and I've been living in a climate that seems to exacerbate that. Dr. Dre is in Texas and she's in extreme humidity right now. And I think that's playing a role in both of our experiences with this. For example, at first I hated the kinship sunscreen because I tried it in a humid climate and it like made me feel like my face was sweating. Now the kinship is my favorite sunscreen. I really, really think that your experience with sunscreens depends on your climate and your skin type. Because on me right now with my dry or dehydrated skin, in this climate that seems to make it worse. Um, these are semi-matte on me. So what I love about this is that it's SPF 50, it's zinc oxide based, it has all those skin soothers and antioxidants, which is great, but there's sort of a disconnect with the texture for me. Like in the mirror, I can see there's a really beautiful sort of shine and luminosity. When I touch my face, it feels a little bit sunscreeny. Like, I don't wanna say greasy and freak you out, but you know what I mean? It feels like you have sunscreen on your face but my face feels a little bit like tight and dry. Um, so that's why I would say these are more of a semi-matte finish or a satin finish on me. While it looks dewy, it feels on my face to not be very moisturizing. What I like to do to help with that, because I really do like these sunscreens, is I just prep my skin a lot better instead. I'll use a hydrating serum. I don't use a hydrating serum every day. I don't find that it always is necessary for me. I just prefer to use products with hyaluronic acid already in them. Um, and so I'll use a hydrating serum and then I'll go in with like a more occlusive, heavier moisturizer under this. And that seems to do the trick for me. So what I would say is like, if you're in a humid climate, you'll probably find these sunscreens quite moisturizing and dewy. If you're in a drier climate, you will probably find them to be more of a satin or a satin matte finish. So just keep that in mind as you ever listen to sunscreen reviews, it is so subjective. What I'll say is that there are some days when this seems to leave a white cast on me. I'm gonna see if I can build it up because on in Dr. Dre's video, I mean, she really, you can really see the white cast on her. I can't recommend this sunscreen if you have like two shades darker than me, I think you would start having an issue. Personally, it really works for me. This totally blends in without a white cast if I really take the time to work it in. Like right now, if I left it there, it looks pretty good on, on camera and my monitor. In person, I can see a little bit of a white cast, but that's totally fine with me. I just work it in and the white cast goes away. Now, you know I'm gonna talk about their marketing claims. They say that this is sheer and non-whitening. It's not. It leaves a white cast if you are anything deeper than fair. Why are we doing this, sunscreen companies? This leaves a white cast. Like, stop it. Don't say that. Blah, 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 blah. I'm over it. I really just think that consumers deserve better marketing because it's sheer and non-whitening if you have super fair skin. So you've heard this a million times. I won't keep talking about it. Um, but my final thoughts on this product, on the uh, non-tinted Aven uh, Solaire UV is that I love it. I think it's great for fair skin. If you have dry or dehydrated skin or you're in a dry climate, I would definitely recommend prepping your skin a little bit beforehand so it feels more moisturizing. But if you're in a humid climate, you'll find this pretty moisturizing. But again, this one is probably just for fair skin. And I believe this is something like $34. So it is on the pricier side of sunscreen. Okay, now we're gonna talk about the Aven High Protection SPF 50 uh, Mineral Filter Tinted Compact for Intolerant Skin. Again, this is a mineral sunscreen. It's zinc-based, and when you open it, it comes with a sponge, and I have the shade 
beige, which is basically what a cream bronzer would be on me. The obvious faults in this product line is that there are only two shades. This is the lightest shade. And I'm gonna tell you straight up right now, this does not work for me. This is way too dark for my skin. Again, comparing to Dr. Dre's video, I personally think she looks more fair than I am. And she said that this sheared out and blended into her skin perfectly. I have no idea how that's possible because this looks so incredibly heavy and dark on me. It does sheer out and you'll see as I apply it, but I cannot recommend this if unless you have a perfect shade match for this. They also have one shade deeper, which I believe is called Honey. The shade range is just very unhelpful. Like I said before, I've been testing this for a few days now and uh, I think that it could be part of the culprit of all of this rash that I'm having. Um, or it's this Kate Somerville chemical sunscreen spray because my skin is incredibly reactive to chemical sunscreen. So I think it's this, but this has been so heavy and just feels like a freaking mask on my skin. I'll show you now, um, that it's just, I think it could also be just causing these breakouts. So as you can see, it is quite dark and it will sheer out again. Some people might be saying like, oh, you're using too much, but it's like, this is supposed to be used as your sunscreen to touch up throughout the day. You can't just go in with a tiny, tiny touch. Um, I think that if you were to find that this matches your skin, you could probably go in and use this as a foundation and get like really good SPF coverage and then touch it up throughout the day. And that would be great for you, but it doesn't match me and it just feels too heavy. So I think you can see the coverage as I start covering up, covering up those breakouts and rashes. You can definitely see there's a lot of coverage. It's making me look a little bit yellow and a little bit darker. So many people have said this in my DMs because I've been testing this for like two days on Instagram. So many people have said it gives us Maybelline dreamy or dream matte mousse vibes. Like it's like just so thick, so heavy sits on top of the skin, so pore clogging kind of thing. But that's how it feels and looks at first. I will say it seems to settle down as you shear it out. Like I think you're seeing right now, it's starting to look a little bit better. You can still tell it's too dark for me and it's, it's quite heavy. It does start out as a cream finish and it sets down to a powder finish. So it's a cream to powder. I bought this compact in the first place because I'm going to visit my parents in Florida next week. I'm gonna be outside all the time, which is quite a change for me. And it's really hot and sunny there. And I'm really bad at reapplying sunscreen when I have makeup on. These two things I bought to try to encourage myself to reapply my sunscreen while I'm on vacation. Cause like when I'm at lunch and wearing makeup and I applied my sunscreen like five hours before that, I need to reapply, but if I'm wearing makeup, it's really difficult. So for me, I have to give this a pass. It might be the cause of my, my breakouts because it's just, I think you can see it's so heavy, but it does set down to sort of a cream to powder finish right now. It's still in the creamy phase. It just, even when it sets down to that cream to powder finish, it just feels very, very heavy. I feel like I'm wearing a mask. Sometimes it makes my skin just feel like, like you just want to wash your face off. You know what I mean? It just feels like you have like a really, really, really heavy foundation on. So I have no idea how Dr. Dre fell so in love with this because she gave this like absolute rave reviews and said it was like sheer and perfect for reapplying. And I'm over here like looking like I'm back in college in 2008 wearing that like Maybelline dream mousse foundation that's like five shades too dark, like ready to hit the club. This does not do it for me, <laughs> but hey, if you're able to make this work, good for you. All right, so I showered off the sheer non-tinted, non-whitening sunscreen and the tinted compact. I know that's a little bit out of order, but I wanted to just show you the compact over like a non-tinted sunscreen. And now I'm gonna go in with the tinted liquid solar UV sunscreen. Interestingly enough, after testing these products for two weeks, I still haven't tried this one on its own and I will show you why. It's because the tint is hella dark, like really, <laughs> really dark. But you know, again, Dr. Dre put it on and it worked for her. So maybe this adjusts to your skin. 
I'm not so sure, but I'm about to take my dog on a walk. And so I'm going to throw this on. And if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out and it's okay. No one's going to see me on my walk. It just looks really dark. My friends who are influencers who got this in PR. Oh my God. I'm scared right now. You guys, this is a fucking nightmare. Um, uh, my friends who got this in PR who are either more fair than I am or slightly deeper said that they just like to mix these two shades. And I would agree with that. Oh my God, this is a disaster. How the fuck did Dr. Dre make this work? Oh my God. No. Oh my God. Oh, okay. Maybe it's going to work. Maybe it's going to work. How did Dr. Dre make this work? She looks so pale. This is crazy. The only reason I figured I would test this on its own was because she was like, boop, 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 looks so sheer on her. What? Mm, damn it. So maybe some of you are like, oh, you know, if she puts it all over her face, maybe it's fine and blends it down her neck. If I wore like a tank top, are you kidding me? Oh. My thoughts are, if you have fair skin, the non-tinted is the way to go. If you have like medium tan skin, the tinted is the way to go. Like this shade skin, do that. If you are in between these two shades, you don't have an option. If you have dark skin, I don't, I don't know that this would work for you. It's hard to say because this is a deeper tint than I've seen before. So that that's good. But again, all of my influencer friends who got these in PR mix these two shades together. That's actually how I've been wearing them and it looks beautiful, but that's just not a possible option for consumers. If you bought both of these, you would end up spending like $70. That's just ridiculous. So my final thoughts are, I really like the texture on me in this climate. They are more of a, uh, dewy look, but a kind of satin matte feeling where I just have to put on a little bit of a heavier moisturizer underneath. I like to mix these two because I'm not quite as fair as the white one and I'm not as deep as the tan, but that's just not possible for consumers. So I would only recommend these if you have tan skin or very, very fair skin. And then I think the compact, uh, it's just crazy that it comes in only two shades. It's too dark for me. I can't make it work and it feels very heavy. Um, I asked you guys on Instagram what you thought of this and I didn't get a single positive message about it. Everyone said that it was like cakey ass, heavy looking foundation. I don't know how Dr. Dre loves this to each their own mad respect. If you're able to make this work, cause it is a really cool product, but I'm going to get the skin better compact instead. So that's it. I'm going to continue to use these by mixing them to get my perfect, perfect tint. If you have access to that and you have the money, go for it. But personally, I think the Dr. Dennis Gross liquid physical sunscreen is um, a better texture that looks the same and I think is pretty, pretty sheer on most skin tones. Um, but yeah, you know, I love the ingredients of these. I do like the way it looks, the way it applies, and I like that it's SPF 50. So there you go. Some people are going to love these. Some people are going to hate these. It really just depends on your skin texture, climate, and skin tone. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time.